And I'd like to welcome everyone to this exclusive conversation with Senator Cory Booker. Uh, we're going to be talking about America's three pandemics, election suppression, police brutality, COVID-19. As the president-elect of the National Bar Association, I'm so privileged to be the moderator this afternoon. At this time, I would like to introduce the 78th president of the National Bar Association, none other than uh, the magnificent uh, C.K. Hoffler out of Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much, Carlos. Um, it is indeed a pleasure for me to be here today. Um, and I want to salute our president-elect out of Mississippi um, who helped to convene this meeting. We are so excited that today we are in the midst of giants. We are here to discuss election protection, police brutality, and COVID-19 with none other than our own Senator Cory Booker. Uh, Senator Booker needs no introduction. We have seen him throughout this country fighting social justice for decades. Um, he's a trailblazer. He is absolutely extraordinary. He's a torchbearer of justice. And I know, Carlos, that you were going to introduce Senator Booker, but I just had to say a few words about him. And, and today, we're also announcing another historic partnership with LexisNexis. LexisNexis, along with the National Bar Association, is sponsoring today's um, talk, today's webinar. And we are delighted that we are in the final throes of a global partnership with a giant in the industry of corporate giant who is committed to social justice and representing LexisNexis today is the executive vice president and general counsel, Ian McDougall, who is going to speak to us briefly as well. And I, I just can't say this, how delighted we are by the partnership. This is the first time that the NBA has had this global partnership with LexisNexis. And so, uh, Mr. McDougall, we welcome you to our National Bar Association family, and we thank you and salute you for um, our, our global efforts. This is a multi-year global partnership. It is. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure. Can I just spend a minute, just a very, very brief uh, introduction. I just wanted to say that for more than a decade, um, LexisNexis has been leading the fight amongst the business community to advance the rule of law uh, around the world. And uh, during that time, we've been arguing, and regrettably, recent events have proved us right, uh, that the fight for the rule of law is not a developed, developing country dichotomy. Um, almost all the countries um, around the world, um, developed and developing, have their own set of challenges to advance the rule of law. In LexisNexis' view, the rule of law means an independent and impartial judiciary, access to the laws, access to remedy, and most relevantly for today's purposes, equality before the law. It's therefore self-evident that LexisNexis stands firmly against racism and discrimination. Without the rule of law, there are no human rights, and equality is a human rights issue after all. And so now, confronted with the stark um, reality of systemic racism in society, our role in advancing the rule of law becomes even more important and fundamental to progress across a whole range of subjects. Our 12,000 colleagues make an active and positive contribution to accelerate equality for all under the law, and we've made commitments to addressing racial injustice and inequity for the African-American community and additionally will take important steps to address the needs of other communities across the company and across the world in the coming years. Uh, the company, um, ours is a long-term commitment and I hope you've seen that by the relationship that we've uh, uh, launched um, today. Guided by a mission to advance the rule of law, the knowledge that everything else depends upon advancing the rule of law and our overall inclusion and diversity strategy. Now, as a key component of this strategy is our new and strategic partnership with the National Bar Association. We want to look forward to collaborating on efforts, including uh, this program and other initiatives, such as the development of technology tools to combat systemic racism and racial equality. And while we want to assist the NBA's efforts to serve its members and the community. I'm very excited at the opportunities we can create. We will fight against systemic racism and we will use our influence and resources for this cause. So my sincere thanks to you, President Hoffler, and the NBA leadership for providing me with this opportunity. Let me hand it back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your comments. And we again uh, welcome the partnership with LexisNexis. I want to say that we are so proud of our NBA member, Roger Brown, who helped to to broker this partnership. He's been a very active member of the NBA and he's working at LexisNexis. Well, um, President-elect Moore, why don't we get started with the program? We eagerly wanna hear 
from um, Senator Cory Booker. There are three areas of focus this year for the National Bar. Election protection um, to fight election suppression, um, as well as COVID-19 and police brutality reform. Carlos? Without further ado, I present to some, introduce to others, the junior senator from the state of New Jersey, Senator Cory Booker. Uh, we have three pandemics. He may want to tell us which is the worst and how we can uh, solve all three of them. One, two, three. Senator, it's in your hands now. Well, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry because of the vote schedule that I've only got about uh, 13 or so minutes with you, but I want to jump right in. We know that injustice is intersectional and it's hard to, 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 to pull one thread out without it affecting interacting with the other. So the, we know that as we've seen within this pandemic, which is a crisis, a health crisis globally, that it has disproportionately impacted uh, people of color in this country, feeding upon our fragilities as a society, including uh, 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 those racial uh, inequities that persist. We have seen how uh, the economic uh, impact of this has also been interrelated with COVID as well as with un enduring systematic racism in our country. And so we have to get through this crisis and we have to do uh, a far more, I hope, our circles of empathy have expanded to that fact that we all are more aware of uh, these savage shortfalls in our society and are going to work to address them. All right. Uh, what active role do you see the NBA playing and other minority attorneys uh, to combat some of the systemic uh, problems uh, in the areas of three pandemics? Well, I, I, this is why when I got first got on this call, I was psyched to see the current president and her extraordinary leadership. I know the kind of activist lawyer she is. And then, then the rising uh, president, not only do I feel a kinship with another bold, bald black brother, uh, but, uh, but knowing that you understand this organization is formed, uh, not just as a service member organization, but to be a force for justice in this nation. And I, I'm telling you right now, as a guy that's fighting in the Senate, to try to get more resources for uh, election security and to conduct uh, um, uh, uh, this election processes in a fair, just, inclusive way, we are falling short in the Senate, especially as Democrats are in a minority. So there are a lot of outside groups that are going to be pivotal. If you are not involved, as you are a lawyer and are not in some way involved, even if it's just giving to organizations like Stacey Abrams' Fair Fight, for example, um, or the efforts going on with the DNC or whomever, um, then you are part of the problem. There's no time right now for bystanders. And if you are a lawyer, there's ways to get involved as poll watchers, poll workers. Um, there are a lot of ongoing active lawsuits going on all around the country uh, to try to, uh, to do the work of securing access to the ballot. And so my, my invitation to you all is to be affirmative in your actions of knowing what are the ways that you can make a difference. Do something, the, the minimum basic necessary is not voting. Uh, it, the minimum basic necessary is to ensure that others have that right in this most pivotal election of our lifetime. Okay. Can you give us, a, I know you uh, kind of hinted at the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. So is it stuck in the Senate now? It passed the House, but it's kind of sitting stale in the Senate, or what's the, what's the latest? It is painfully stuck in the Senate. The House passed it with some Republican support, and it's a law that would ban certain practices that most Americans, Republican, Democrat, believe this should be banned, like chokeholds, no-knock warrants. It creates far more transparency in our policing in this country. So anyone from activists to incredible organizations like the NBA can look at the data coming out of American police departments to see if that institutional racial bias is there. And of course, it allows those police officers who break the law, violate people's rights, to be held accountable in federal uh, courts. It gets rid of things like qualified immunity as well as uh, the standard uh, for which they can be held accountable for reckless use of force. Uh, now, to get it done, it, it, look, we would not have gotten it through the House of Representatives if it wasn't for the activism, the artistry of activism going on in all 50 states uh, around this country. Activists made it possible in the same way they made the Voting Rights Act possible, the Fair Housing Act possible, the 1964 Civil Rights Act possible. It was all the result of people's activism. And so right now, it stopped in the Senate. But should we take control of the Senate and have the majority, I am confident that this will go to Joe Biden's desk should he win. And that's why this is one of those elections where health care is on the ballot, where voting rights is on the ballot, 
where justice and policing is on the ballot, environmental policy is on the ballot. So much is at stake in this election, which is, again, an, another reason why your earlier question of what can we do uh, is so critically important that all of us are asking, asking ourselves that question. Seven weeks left in this election. Every single day we should be asking ourselves, what have I done today for this moral moment, for this cause of our country leading into the election day? Okay. Senator, the last time I saw you, we were together here in Mississippi. Uh, John Lewis was still alive. It was 2018. We had the grand opening, our grand opening of the Civil Rights Museum. So we were appreciative of you coming and so privileged to have uh, Congressman Lewis with us as well. He's since gone on uh, to be with the Lord, but I believe there is a Voting Rights Act in, in Congress. I don't know if it's the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Can you tell us if that's, what's, what's the latest on that? Yeah, Mr. President, like, I'm sorry that you had to bring up that uh, really auspicious historic moment. For me, it was very humbling because people kept thinking I was you and, uh, <laughs> and, and stopping me. Look, I, I am thrilled um, that John Lewis lived such a life worthy of celebration. I'm sad to have lost my friend and colleague, but God, we should, we should be celebrating that we had such a historic figure who lived his entire life in service to sacrifice. But what a painful reality for him to watch uh, the Voting Rights Act that he bled for uh, be undermined by the Shelby decision that, that gutted the, the Civil Rights Act. And that's why the House did the right thing. They named the next Voting Rights Act after him to make sure that uh, everything from the preclearance measures to uh, making registration to vote much easier, all of these things that are being done to erode the franchise in this country, this is a robust bill both to fix and advance voting rights in America. And I am thrilled, I am very hopeful that, uh, that this can be something that we get done. It is within reach. The House is gonna get it passed. It comes back to my turf, the United States Senate. And so I know what the battlefield is for me. Um, it is uh, these, a lot of these Senate races from Maine to Iowa to Colorado to Montana to South Carolina, Georgia. I could go through all the competitive Senate races there are, uh, including frankly, Mississippi. Uh, and so we, we've got to make sure that we are involved, not just our focus on Kamala and, and Joe. Uh, trust me, I, I've got my Kamala dance. All, when she wins, I will shed tears of joy and celebrate at this uh, incredible marker. But I know that is not uh, the be all and end all. We need to get the White House back, but also control of the Senate, get Mitch McConnell into the minority. And even then, I hope you all will have me back on for another Zoom to tell you that, look, that victory got us out of the valley, but it did not get us to the mountaintop, and we got work to do. Absolutely. Our president. Um, um, Carlos, I, I just like to, first of all, Senator Booker, thank you so much. We know that you have to leave shortly. I wanted you to know that the NBA has a robust election protection effort. We are mobilizing over 5,000 African American lawyers. We've identified 22 of the worst states with election protection. We're doing training in all those states. We are mobilizing in our communities with the religious groups, other grassroots organizations. We are not standing by and being bystanders as an organization, first. And secondly, we are making calls to the Senate. We're very aware of where the, the George Floyd Policing and Justice Act stands, and we are not going to stop until it passes. Our NBA Vice President, Lanita Baker, was lead counsel for Breonna Taylor. She and Ben Crump. And so a victory on that case that just happened, that historic settlement that also had programmatic initiatives, changes in the policing, mirrors in some respects what you're trying to get through in the Senate. So I just want you to know that we have your back on this in terms of the, and it is a nonpartisan effort, our election protection, but we have your back on this. And we thank you so much for all that you do. Madam President, uh, thank you for informing me, but I am in no way surprised. Not only do I know this organization, uh, but I know you and uh, your leadership, the vice president's leadership, the incoming leadership, you all are living the spirit of Charles Hamilton Houston, of Thurgood Marshall, and so many other lawyers that made a way for all of us to be where we are today. So I, I want to give a shout and a holla uh, and say thank you all for your determination and your commitment. And I have benefited from uh, the robust partnership my office has had on many occasions with you all. So I just feel happy to be in the fields with you, with our hands on the plow, and, and you give me greater confidence, frankly, this organization does, uh, that the, the, the songs of our ancestors will be the truth of our children, which is we shall overcome. Absolutely. Well, Senator, I know you have to run, but I do want to tell you that we are out here fighting. Uh, we are trying to protect the vote for November 3rd. 
hopefully if Kamala leaves you, that Mike Espy will be joining you in the Senate and we'll be uh, have the same numbers or better in the Senate uh, representation wise. So thanks. And let me just give a shout out to Jamie Harrison, uh, Reverend Warnock. Uh, we, we have a, a, just a great group of African-American potentials uh, coming up. So I'm happy to see Kamala go away, but don't you all leave me alone. Send, send some more help, <laughs> uh, please. We'll do our best. Protect the vote. Again, thanks again, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you very much for all you, all you guys do. I'm, I'm all in awe and humbled by you as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Madam President, we yes. know what we have to do. We do know what we have to do. We have a clarion call. And so, um, President-elect Moore, I thought it would be important for uh, Barbara Arnwine to give uh, those who are tuning in um, an idea of some of the robust, particular robust measures that we're doing um, in election protection, protecting the right to vote. We have another one of our leaders, uh, Senator Booker, who's given that clarion call, protect the right to vote. Don't, it's not time for us to rest and to think that we can just vote. We have to do more. And so Barbara, are you on the line? If you could join us. Well, while we're waiting for Barbara and Wine, um, Carlos, you are co-chairing the election protection effort. And um, as many of our members know who are tuning in, we have an upcoming conference, the Wiley Bratton Conference, that is that will begin on October 15th and through October 17th. That conference is pretty much exclusively dedicated to election protection, protecting the right to vote. We will then, two or so weeks before the presidential election, conduct the training seminars for 22 states and also other related seminars so that our members and our coalition partners will be well equipped in the election protection effort because quite frankly right now um, this week will be the first um, the first um, set of marches to the polls where there are some states that already have early voting and we have our teams led by barbara Ironline, transformative justice coalition one of our coalition partners, Rainbow Push Coalition, another coalition partner, and the National Bar Association and, and others to protect the right to vote. I think Barbara Arnwine is online. Are you ready to speak, Barbara? Yes, I am. I apologize. I was on the wrong stream, apparently. Um, and I am just um, trying to, uh, oh, there we go. Now we're ready. Thank you yes. so much. I was on another call. We are organizing Senator Booker. Thank you so much for you know your presentation. I was helping. We're organizing marches all over the country uh, to have uh, make sure that voters are aware of early voting season and that they participate and that they have help and to register, help to you know, get their votes done, help to restore their rights if they're in those uh, states where if you're you know, formally convicted of a felony, you have to restore your right, petition to do so. So there's so much going on, but we just had you know, a national call. It was very uh, energetic. Uh, thank you, uh, President uh, Hoffler, and thank you so much, President-elect uh, Moore. Uh, just want to say to everybody, we need you. You heard that. But we need black lawyers. Uh, you know, one of the things that people don't know about that's been happening in the country is when you have a general election, these out of state lawyers show up, and a lot of times they know nothing about black communities and they don't understand you know, what, people, what voters are telling them. We get missed reports, we miss you know, the ability to uh, you know, solve urgent problems because of communications. We have lawyers lost, you know, who don't know the streets. We need lawyers. We need you where you are. We need you to tell our, you know, help our people. I was been celebrating and I told President Hoffler about this earlier and President-elect more about this earlier, but black lawyers made a big difference yesterday in Pennsylvania. It was a huge victory because black lawyers, brought a lawsuit, I mean, they fought a lawsuit that was brought by the RNC, the Republican National Committee is spending $20 million to stop the expansion of the right to vote. In the COVID era, they don't want there to be drop boxes, they want to impose strict requirements for exact match. They want to have all these, uh, you know, they want to consolidate polling places. Uh, they want to, you know, restrict 
uh, you know, poll workers. It's just a mess what they're doing around the country. It's evil. They want to stop, uh, you know, uh, registrars from sending out uh, ballots, um, you know, to mail them directly to voters. They don't even want them pre-filling in uh, forms for application for apps uh, for their absentee or vote by mail ballot. It's just evil all over the country. And we need lawyers who can step into these frays because there are battles going on everywhere over all kinds of voting issues. We need vote, we need lawyers who can do that. So that's our rapid response lawyers, but we also need lawyers to be on the hotline. The hotline is where hundreds of thousands of voters will call and they will say, because their states are so bad about supplying information, they're gonna be asking people, where do I vote? Where's my polling place? They're gonna be saying, when, when, what are the polling hours? They're, I mean, basic information. Uh, what, do, what kind of ID do I need in my state to vote? They're gonna be saying, what do I do? I'm here, it is 7.30. The polls were to have opened at seven o'clock and it's not open. Uh, President Hoffler can tell you she's been in that situation. Or, you know, I'm at the polling place and we've been here for an hour and they're out of balance. This has happened. I'm telling you, it happens. Well, how, how, what do I do? How do I vote? How do I, you know, they're telling me I need to vote provisionally because they say it, they can't find me on the list. And I'm sitting here with my, uh, re my voter registration card, with my ID, and they're telling me they can't find me on the polling list and so you know all of these things happen and that's why the hotline is so important i've sat on that hotline i've answered voter questions i tell you there's no greater feeling than when you solve that problem that they have and they're able to vote there's no greater feeling than when you call up a county board of elections and say this is what's happening uh you know at this polling site this is what's happening at other polling sites. And all of a sudden they say, okay, we got to get out an emergency notice to every polling site to tell them how to handle this uh, problem and stop it. Uh, stop what's happening to the voters. Uh, so I just want to, you know, put that appeal uh, out. Also at the polling place, we need people to be field volunteers, to be, you know, poll workers. Uh, and when I say that, I mean to be poll monitors who will be sitting in your cars. Some of people will you know, walk the lines and will help voters who are at the polling place uh, to solve problems. A lot of problems you can solve right there. I have helped uh, you know, advocate for voters at polling places, people who were told that they could not vote because they had the uh, different uh, address and they were at the wrong precinct, all of those issues. And it often turns, it turns out that the information that they have is just wrong. And we've been able to correct it by sending them to the correct pages, the correct places on the poll book uh, to confirm. So we need you to be there to help voters, to inspire voters. But lastly, besides those four things I just talked about, we need you to be a captain for the hotline, to supervise five uh, of the election protection hotline volunteers. We need you to be hotline volunteers to pick a you know, four hour shift that you can uh, do or more. We need you to be uh, you know, a rapid response attorney to help us with the litigation. And we need you to uh, be you know, a, poll, uh, you know, a poll monitor. But we also need you to do voter education. The states are horrible at voter education. People literally don't know what to do. What do I do if I request a vote by mail ballot, an absentee ballot, and doesn't show in time? I don't get it. I'm sitting up there and it's October the 31st. I have nothing. Uh, what do I do? Do I go to the polls and uh, vote? Can I vote? How do I vote? All of these issues, we need to help voters. Uh, we, so we need you to be educating people about when they should be requesting their application in those states that require that. Now remember there are nine states that have no such requirement. They mail the ballots directly to all their voters. Uh, and you gotta know those things and we gotta help voters to know those things. So I just want to put out a huge appeal. Be an election protection volunteer. Be an election protection volunteer. Uh, B1, we need you desperately. We need you to do that work 
Uh, we can't tell you how important you are to every voter. I've never, ever in my life, as long as we've been doing election protection, we created it and it was operational in 2000 and 2001. Ever since, I have never encountered a voter who wasn't jubilant, happy, when we were able to solve their problems or give them the information they needed. Because people want to vote, let's help them to do so. Thank you so much, President Hoffman. Well, thank you so much, Barbara Arnwine. You've been our senior advisor all last year in the election protection effort in building the program you and Tanya Clayhouse. We have a, 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 an MBA, Transformative Justice Coalition Fellow, whose sole purpose is to coordinate all of the efforts, the election protection efforts of our organization. Just a few things I'd like to share with our MBA family. First, we have partnered with the sorority of AKA sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha, the women of Alpha Kappa Alpha. And they are going to be launching their election protection effort through the National Bar Association. We have over 700 lawyers from the, the sorority AKA, but it didn't, it's not stopping there. The Kappas, the Kappas have said, and I, I know that our president like Carlos Moore is a member of the Kappa and others in our, in our organization, in our great organization have decided they too want to join our effort. And they've said if there are over 700 AKAs that are registering through the NBA to serve as election protection lawyers, we can do better and double that. And we're not stopping there. I got word recently that the gentleman from Omega Psi Phi have said we are mega sci-fi till the day we die. And if the Kappas feel that they can, then, then they can um, bring over a thousand, we can do better than that. So I, I'm joking with you all a bit, but the point that I'm making is the lawyers in our organizations around the country are stepping up to the plate. Our job at the National Bar Association is to one, train the lawyers, two, make sure that we direct and organize a fine-tuned, well-oiled machine leading up to the elections to place our lawyers. Barbara Arnwine has, on, has, has outlined five ways that you can help. You don't have to feel pressure to be at the polls. We are operating in COVID. We understand that, but there are so many things that you can do at your desk. If you're working from home, working from home or working at your office. In terms of we have partnered, we are so delighted about our partnership with Lexus Nexus. I say that it's global, it's historic. We're inking the final um, terms of it. But we have to have support of some of our partners in our, our global quest for equality and for protecting also the right to vote. That's one of our equality measures. It's so important. So please know, members of the National Bar Association, we are working day and night to put together a program that is second to none in this country. We are leading the way with the nonpartisan election protection effort. Barbara Arnwine, the reason why she's speaking so much on our platform all the time is because she's the mother of the election protection movement. She started it, she created it, she crafted it when she was at the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. Now she's the CEO and founder of Transformative Justice Coalition, another partner of the National Bar Association. The Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights is also partner of the, of the National Bar Association, the NAACP, the ACLU, all of the groups, and the law firms that are engaged in the litigation to protect the right to vote. There are currently up over 200 pieces of litigation relative to voting rights throughout the country. The NBA is also very active in Florida and helping with the restoration of rights. Our young lawyers, our young lawyers association led by Anika Williams, the energy that these lawyers have to wanna to help and protect the right to vote, whether you have a record or not, if that's what the law is. And so we are partnered throughout the country. We're gonna have these training sessions ongoing. Our affiliate chapters have been training for months. So if you are in our affiliate chapters, you know what your affiliate chapters are doing, but just in case you haven't had training, that's why two weeks before the election, we're doing training in 22 states. If you find yourself in a situation where you need guidance and those states aren't covered, we will help you. We will place you. We're also, we've also forged an alliance with the AAJ to provide our National Bar Association lawyers to help them with their efforts to protect the right to vote. So we have so much work to do, ladies and gentlemen. I know we have our day jobs. I know we have family, but at stake, is the right to vote. We heard from Senator Cory Booker, we heard from Reverend Jesse Jackson and from 
and from the late Congressman John Lewis in March, I say this, March 2nd of 2020, gave us a clarion call. He and Reverend Jackson helped to design my civil rights agenda this year. And in the words of the late Congressman John Lewis, we always talk about that trouble, that good trouble. But what he said about the NBA lawyers is that we must protect the right to vote. Protect the right to vote. If you're in Florida and you have had the misfortune of being a convicted felon and you've served your time and paid your dues, you have the right to vote. And the fact that there have, there have been taxes, polling taxes, the equivalent of imposed upon you, that's why the NBA and other organizations in Florida, the Alphas, the gentlemen of, of Alpha, also are working with us to help in the effort to restore the rights to vote. So we ask that you join in this effort. If you have any questions, also I saw that the webpage was, was up. You can go on the NBA webpage and you will see exactly how to get engaged with the election protection effort. And I would like if you could, Kyle, if you could, th there we go. It says how to volunteer. And I wanted you to also just um, after we have how to volunteer, if you could put up also the sponsors of today's program. It's of course, it's the National Bar Program, but we are also proud that our global partner, LexisNexis is also a sponsor of the program. And we wanna thank Mr. McDougall for his participation, for his kind words, and for the commitment of LexisNexis to, to join and partner with us in equality and in fighting injustice, not just in the United States, but globally. So um, President-elect Moore, I think our program has pretty much concluded. Are there questions that we can answer? I think we may have one question. I see one question from Cynthia Robbins. Um, she's asking for those of us primarily disenfranchised in DC, how do we determine the states where we are most needed to assist? Um, so, with the election protection effort, election. that is our that is our job. That's an excellent question. Yes. And I lived I lived in the District of Columbia. I know how you feel. It's disheartening, but change is coming. Change is coming. Um, we were one of our our tasks and our jobs, and that's why we've identified the twenty two worst states, is right. to make sure that our lawyers are dispatched in the different categories of, 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 I don't wanna say jobs, but different categories of tasks so that we can utilize your services where we need them the most. That is what we're doing in our, coordinated, in our coordination efforts. That's why we have been working so hard so that we have our finger on the pulse of what's going on in these different states. So we will be, we will be coordinating that no matter where you're from. When we know we need, I think Barbara said we need 736 hotline captains that's what they, that's what you're calling them right we will be and and all of you will have the training please don't worry about the training we will be giving you the training so you'll know how to answer those questions so if for instance we need people dispatched or to make calls in new jersey and we are saturated we have many many lawyers in new jersey we have robust um, bar associations in new jersey affiliate chapters then we would call on people in other jurisdictions to help us. Now, when it comes to litigation, if you have to get in court, you have to be licensed, of course, in that state. But even with the litigation, for the rapid response, you would be joining teams of lawyers. We want our lawyers integrated in teams or leading the litigation, as we saw in Philadelphia. And Barbara, thank you so much for pointing that out, because it's important on this social justice mission of protecting the right to vote that we are seen and we take our proper place as leaders not as followers, not as collaborative people, but as leaders. And that is what the National Bar Association is doing. Barbara, I didn't know if you had any additional comments. Yes, uh, I would encourage anyone who is interested in uh, being a, uh, a traveling attorney, as we call them, uh, because there will be a need. I mean, we've always had to send people into Georgia, Pennsylvania, uh, we've always had to send people into Florida, uh, you know, Florida. Now, listen, we're not talking about Atlanta and Miami. We're talking about, you know, some of the smaller communities that people really need help in, uh, Alabama, et cetera. We know there are going to be those needs. Uh, so we do want you to get in touch with us. You can actually write me. If, and I will get the list over to uh, Marcia Johnson Blanco. I believe she is mblanco at lawyerscommittee.org. 
uh, that's her email address. But my email address, of course, uh, you, if you write the National Bar uh, and give them uh, the uh, uh, let them know that you want to volunteer, they will let me know, right? Uh, Absolutely. Madam President, isn't that the Absolutely. fastest way to do it? Uh, that is the fastest and, way. Yes, and I would be happy because uh, our offices are literally next door to each other. <laughs> I mean, we literally walk right, you know, two, two feet and we're in each other's offices. Uh, so I want, you know, people to do that. If you want to volunteer to be a, a traveling attorney, we will need some attorneys to beef up our core in other states. Uh, it, uh, it's going to require some, you know, some real work and coordination, but the sooner we know about you, the better for us to start thinking that out. The other thing I wanna really be clear about everybody, you gotta take the training. If you're gonna do the hotline, there is a hotline training that the Lawyers Committee offers through We The Action. You should always sign up with the MBA first, and then we're gonna send you to where you have to get the training uh, done. Uh, but uh, in addition to the training that we will do, you're gonna be one of the best trained lawyers uh, sitting on the hotline, one of the best trained lawyers uh, doing this work all over the country because we're supplementing the training that you mandatorily must take as part of the election protection hotline uh, network. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? There are two more are questions, Madam questions? President. And I okay. I think we'll be done. Uh, Reginald Virgil asked the question, his question is, is there any way we can push to make election day a national holiday? Yes. Yes. Uh, if Eric, yes, absolutely. And we should, um, you know, that should be on the NBA's, uh, you know, primary ag uh, agenda. You saw that because of the good work of people in Virginia this year, uh, election day will be a holiday in the state of Virginia. Uh, and people are doing that all over the country. So we absolutely want you, if you want to see it become a national holiday, to join us in pushing for that because there's a lot of efforts to do that. I also will tell you, in my personal opinion, having Election Day as a national holiday is critical. But remember that for African American people, if given the opportunity to vote early, uh, we will vote 50 to 70 percent to 80 percent of all of our votes cast will be early. We prefer to vote early, and that's why we fight in the states for early voting also. That's as critical as the national holiday. It's, in fact, probably more critical. So that's where we also need to be putting a lot of our energies is expanding early voting. If you have at least two weeks of early voting, including Saturdays and Sundays, it's magical for Black folks because that's what we do. And it's magical for Latinos. All right. And as Wonderful. you saw, we have a friend in Senator Booker. I believe he's one of our members of the National Bar Association. He's a lawyer uh, and he is a friend of ours. And so we'll uh, if he's not already uh, leading the charge to get this a national <laughs> holiday, we'll put that bug in his ear when we live being on the day on the hill. Uh, the last, the last question I see, um, Ernest Elmore is asking: Are we familiar with an effort to disenfranchise protesters, protesters in Tennessee, uh, by the governor yes. uh, changing assembly and protest violations uh, from a misdemeanor to to a felony of the legislature? Are you familiar with that? Oh yes. Okay. Absolutely. You know, the uh, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and um, the ACLU, the NAACP have been all over Tennessee. Remember, this is like their third ugly proposal they come up with this year. Uh, 2020, they've been actively uh, trying to disenfranchise voters all over the place. This is their la latest uh, assault. We absolutely are looking at, uh, you know, absolutely lawyers are taking that on. Uh, we're not going to sit back and let them, you know, penalize protesters and, and uh, in essence, destroy the First Amendment. Uh, so, Yes, very much so. And thank you for raising that because that's one that's kind of gone under the radar nationally, but it's a vicious attack on protesters. So as we're talking about that, as we're talking about that, this is an opportunity for some of our NBA lawyers to be engaged. That's an example of election right. protection litigation, protecting the right to vote. So and, if and, we're those, 
Oh, I'm sorry. If there are those who are interested in being a part of that, there are litigation teams. They always need more lawyers. And remember, you don't necessarily have to leave your home. We understand they were operating in COVID. That's very, very important. Go at your comfort level. There are many of us that will be going to the polls. But for those of you who are not comfortable, you should do what makes you comfortable. And while I'm speaking of that, the NBA is going to be providing protective gear. And we've talked about these 22 different states and, and we've also identified certain cities, protective gear, including masks, um, the, the plastic shields, gloves and hand sanitizer, as well as water. We're currently negotiating with various water companies to provide free water throughout the country in certain places in partnership with the National Bar Association. Um, later, you will have the opportunity, hopefully we'll have it done by the end of this week, to donate directly for the protective gear on our website. That would be separate and apart from any donations you would make to the National Bar Association. It would be directly for the protective gear. So I just want to make sure that, the, that you all know, as our NBA family and extended family, that we are operating on all levels in terms of protecting the right to vote. We have to recognize that we're operating in COVID. Part of operating in COVID is helping people with protective gear, helping people with transportation, as our members did in our affiliate chapter in, um, um, let's say, oh, gosh, in so many states. I know that we helped in Philadelphia. I know we helped in Georgia. And I know we helped in um, Memphis, too, and other places where there were issues with transportation, or when we also know that some of the precincts were closed. Our members helped. To, trans, to give transportation, to provide water to people who are just waiting in long lines. And, and that's a type of collaborative effort that we as African-American lawyers must do. But again, at our comfort level, if you aren't comfortable going inside, you can facilitate the delivery of water. You can facilitate the organization of transportation for our senior citizens. Because with a lot of the voting precincts being closed, people don't have a way of getting Normally, they'd have to walk down the street or go a couple blocks away. Now, they might have to drive 20 minutes away. So there's so many ways that you can help um, without leaving your home if that is your comfort zone. All right. So I think uh, that answers the last question. Antoinette Barksdale had asked, uh, what are we doing for seniors? Anything special for seniors? And I think you just addressed that, Madam President. So. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. And... and, and and I just wanted to say, because uh, I got to go, but um, I did want to say, Madam President, again, thank you. Uh, and thank you, President-elect uh, Carl Wilkes Moore. Uh, but I did want to say to everybody, uh, remember, even if you see teams of lawyers, uh, you see the Democrats suing somebody, you see whatever, we need to intervene in a lot of these lawsuits. Uh, that's where we're making a mistake. Uh, because I'm seeing settlements and, uh, and uh, re resolutions of cases that we should not be resolving those ways if we're trying to help African-American voters uh, be able to vote. Uh, so we need to make sure that we're intervening so we can protect the interests of our voters the best. So that's why we need you on the litigation front. We need you on the hotline. We need you at the polling places. We need you so bad uh, in this uh, fight. And thank you so much. I, I, I must leave, but thank you so much uh, for having me. Okay, thank you so much, Barbara. And then finally, I'd like you all to know that we have, when we're doing the training in the multiple states, we're, we will have experts from those states also speak. We have our own internal group, National Bar um, experts, and then we will have experts also that are outside of the National Bar, but who can tell us and answer specific questions about the different states. Okay. All right. Well, that concludes everything. Uh, thanks, as always, Madam President, for allowing us to uh, put this together for you in the National Bar Association. It was our pleasure, and we look forward to doing it again. Absolutely. Have a good day, everyone. All right. Okay.